just going to give a few people a few seconds, a minute or so to join us. Hello everybody, how's everybody doing? Good evening family. It's family meeting time. If you don't see a family member who is supposed to be here, please remind them, WhatsApp them, Facebook them. Is Facebook a thing? Facebook them. <laughs> please call Bible study now. All right? Uh, so that they hop on. You can tag them as well. Let's make sure that um, you know, we remind them and we let them know that we are gathering. How's everybody doing? Hello. Hello, La Family. We're going to give it until about maybe two minutes, three minutes after seven, and then we'll we'll get into it. Everybody's still logging on. <clears throat> Welcome. Uh, it's hectic today. So, uh, you know I say it every time, but today is really the day. Uh, please make sure that you do get a notepad or a pen and a paper. Grab your Bible but cold get you a cup of coffee uh yes it's definitely bible study your clock um i hope you guys are well you've had a good week uh but yeah uh, if you are using notepad notepads or a device to take notes today is the day of notes i'm a church girl so i'm tempted to say tell your neighbor take notes <laughs> It's definitely a day for us to take notes. We're going to go through quite a, a number of scriptures um, and just, I think, quite key practical things that uh, we can start to implement in our lives. So today is a very teaching message. It's taking notes, you going over the notes, you amplifying the notes as best as you can to make sure that, um, you know, you understand it to, to, to the level that makes sense. Um, uh, one more minute, let's give our family an opportunity to come through. Like I said, tag someone, remind them. Uh, if you've got a friend who's going through some stuff and you feel like the word of God would be a great thing for them to hear, invite them on. Uh, tell them we'll buy them that to come. Come hang with us. Let's come together to pray and hang. All righty. Those who are not here, Padar Tolapili. We'll wait for them at the corner. Um, somebody says there's load shedding. Cool. Don't worry, I'll put this up on. On the grid, you'll be able to see it. Good evening, everybody. Uh, for those of you who are new, my name is Rorosang Tandega Tandegiso. I don't know why I did the whole full name. My name is Rorosang. That's that's also okay. <laughs> and I'm part of an incredible family called Jesus This, Jesus That. And uh, everybody's names that you're seeing scrolling down here, the odd 1,800 and something of them that are here are part of this family. We are uh, Jesus lovers, we believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We believe that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and that uh, it is through him that we make and reach our Father. We believe in sound word, undiluted, to take the word as it is and to run with it. We believe in, in coming together, right? Uh, be it in prayer or to look at the word of God, to study, uh, to further grow ourselves. Uh, this platform is a platform that is designed to cultivate a lifestyle of prayer, a lifestyle of devotion, a lifestyle of finding time within our schedules and our lives to, to, to intentionally position God in our lives. So it's going to be amazing. Most of the times it's great, <laughs> but oftentimes Bible study is quite challenging. I don't know if it's just me, but I mean, they'll tell you as well that it, uh, sometimes, man, hey, sometimes the word is like, okay. You want to leave and go sort out your life and that's good it's good it's good that we can read the word and we can see the areas in our lives that we have to correct we have to really zone in so it's a great pleasure for me to welcome you tonight um, um i'm excited about today's word like i said today's word is very much on the practical side of things so uh, we're going to be taking lots of notes and um, like i said i will leave this on the grid for you guys uh, to go back to just to take notes at a little stay at a later stage shall we pray it gets personal somebody says it gets very personal. it gets very personal somebody on tiktok's like why do you come for us i was like babes there is nothing that comes for you that didn't come for me first before i say it trust me oftentimes when i'm preparing for devotion or i'm you know i'm, I'm, I'm just going woo. today i was reading you know parts of the scripture and i was literally laughing out loud because i was like that's me 
right there. What I'm really there is me. Uh, so when it does get personal, trust you believe, you know, we can't teach something that the Lord has not already slapped me across the face with. So that should give you comfort. Um, but I want us to pray. Shall we thank God for this week? You know, we're Thursday, we're here, we're still here, we're still breathing, still alive and kicking and moving. We've gathered again. God has given us this opportunity for us to be together. Um, uh, so let's start there. Remember again, you're not here to watch me. There is nothing exciting to watch about me, uh, but we're here to, 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 to really engage. Uh, so find a comfortable space where you are and um, let's get into the habit of not watching the live, but participating. Does that make sense? Shall we thank God for this week? Thank you for this beautiful week. Thank you, Lord God, for your faithfulness throughout this week. I thank you that uh, the deadlines were met, the emails were responded to. Yes, it got tricky here and there, Lord God, but you were faithful enough to see us through. We do not take it for granted that you've seen us until this far. And we just want to take this opportunity right now, Lord God, just to thank you. You know, sometimes our week can go by so quickly, Lord God, and and uh, many small things are amplified and the other things, Lord God, can easily be swept through under the carpet as if they were not great. But Father, thank you that we were able to go to work and come back every single day and uh, you covered us and you kept us safe. Thank you that our children went to school, Lord God, and no evil or harm came their way. We thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God, thank you that we were able to hand in those assignments and meet those deadlines. And even though, Lord God, it took the last breath out of us, we're thankful that you kept us and seen us through. Lord God, thank you for the opportunity for some of us who are looking for work, that you gave us opportunities to go to interviews, Lord God, to hand in our CVs, uh, even those letters or responses that we got, Lord God, that were not successful. We are thankful that you are God who is still working on our future. In fact, your word promises us that your future is top of mind about us, Lord God. Thank you that you think of even the things we don't even think of. We thank you, Lord God, that our bodies are in health this week, Lord God, that none of us were admitted into hospital, that we never had to rush or be put on ventilators because we couldn't breathe, Lord God. Thank you that our lungs and our eyes and our hands and our bodies are functional. We thank you, Lord God, that the good that you've done, Lord God, we would like to take this moment to pause to say thank you. Thank you for the privileges that you give us. Thank you for the things that, Lord God, sometimes we even forget to say thank you for. Thank you for the ability to do the things that we love. Thank you for the ability to wake up in the morning and start a brand new day. Thank you for this week. Thank you that you've been faithful to us in this week. Thank you for seeing us through. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we honor you and we lift up your name above all names. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. That should be a habit of ours that we take time to thank God. You know, we were speaking about this last week that sometimes we amplify, remember we use the mug as an example, we amplify the problem so much that the, even the good that God is doing, we can't be found in our lips, you know. You know, you're complaining about one thing, but God is, is opening a door in another and your focus is in one place. So the Bible says, count it all joy, meaning be conscious be conscious, meaning joy and, and gratitude and thankfulness is, a, is an intentional act. It's not just, oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, you know, thank you for the food. I meant go. Mm -mm. It's thank you, Lord. I just had to steal the chip there. But it's thank you, Lord. You know, it's a consciousness. It's a, it's a, it's a moment in time that we take to say, we see you, Lord God. We see the work that you do in our lives. And we are grateful. All righty. Quick question before we get into today's word. We have a challenge this week. And I've been getting DMs from some of you guys. And can I tell you when I say some of them have literally brought me to tears. Because you really are going out and doing the great work of the Lord. Our challenge this week is to tell somebody we don't know about the God we know. So tell somebody about tell somebody you don't know about a god you know so tell somebody about jesus 
right and some of you guys have been sending messages and some of you like oh i struggled that chickened out some of you like yo i did it i've got two people i've got three people you know and getting the hang of it i know it gets quite scary and overwhelming um but i just want us to take one minute just to pray uh, that god really helps us to get over ourselves so that we can start doing his work all right so so some of us who haven't done it this week some of us who've come up with excuses about time and not being able to get an opportunity we just want to bring that to god this evening and say father you know maybe i've made excuses this week maybe i have spoken to a couple of people this week and maybe it didn't go the way i planned it maybe it did go the way i planned it but i pray that your word will never move from my lips i pray that you will make me sensitive to hear the Holy Spirit and instruction. I pray that I will always be ready to do the will and the work of God. Shall we pray? Mudimutate, here we are. We're excited about this week's challenge. It's probably one of the most difficult challenges we've ever had this week, Lord God. As we draw to the end of the week and the end of the challenge, we thank you, Lord God, because this is not just a challenge for the next seven days, but Father God, it's an introduction to a new way of life, a consciousness of us being active participants in the kingdom of God, that your great commission, Lord, God is that we go out into the earth and tell people about Jesus, tell people about the good news, tell people about the saving power of Jesus Christ. Lord God, some of us have done that, some of us have chickened out, some of us are still uttering or finding ways to do it. But even that tonight, Lord God, I want to just bring everybody towards you, Lord God. Lord God, we're eager, we're filled with energy, we've got the zeal to do it. Maybe we're shy, maybe we're in our heads. Holy Spirit, the great teacher, I pray that you move within all of us, that we'll have the utterance, the confidence, the God confidence to step into spaces, to speak about you, to represent the kingdom of God well, to share you with those we come across. Lord God, those we know, those we don't know, that Father Holy Spirit, you will open our eyes. Holy Spirit, to be able to see the opportunities that are in front of us that present themselves to us where we can present Jesus Christ as the answer and the solution. Be it in our workspaces, be it in the taxi, be it standing in the line, Lord God, be it at the salon, at the barber cutting my hair. Lord God, wherever we are, may we be the ones who are able to recognize an opportunity to present Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that this is not something that's far-fetched. Thank you, Lord God, that this is not something that's chosen for the select few. Thank you, Lord God, that the Great Commission is one that you speak over all of us, that you've given all of us capacity to do it, that you've given us all of us the unction to do it, that you've given all of us the grace to step out and declare you. And Father, tonight, Lord God, within ourselves, I speak to our spirit man. The man that is conscious, Lord God, of kingdom mandate, that we will be the ones that go out to tell people about Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, that we will not be ashamed, we will not be apologetic, we will not be made to feel less, Lord God, that we will stand up in confidence and in boldness. The same way that we boldly come before you is the same way that we will boldly stand in front of nations to declare you as Lord, to declare you as ruler, to declare you as above all things. And Lord God, I pray that this will be a normality for us. Sure. That this will be our way of life. That Lord God, we won't even need to turn it into a challenge because it's exactly what we do. I pray that it will become our lifestyle. That it will become secondary behavior to us. That any opportunity that presents itself, we share this God we have discovered. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I come against any spirit of fear. Anything, Lord God, that's making us stay in our minds and not stepping out in faith. Anything that's convincing us that we're not worthy of sharing Jesus. Anything that's convincing us that we don't know enough to share about Jesus. Lord God, we declare that the little that we know is enough to tell somebody about the goodness of Jesus. The works of on the cross there for us in the mighty name of jesus christ we honor you lord god we bless the reading of your word as we get into your word this evening lord god it's going to be an exciting time i pray that you anoint my lips that i speak what you say i should say that lord god it will not be my opinion and my thoughts but instead it will be your word presented undiluted for us tonight in the mighty name of jesus christ amen Amen, everybody. 
Amen. All right, I want to get comfortable. Can somebody just check the sound for me? Just make sure that we can hear each other. I do get loud as time goes on, but you guys love me because I'm family, right? Is the sound fine? If you're happy with the sound, then we can go. I just need somebody to give me a thumbs up. Uh, Jabu, I saw you in there. John, can I get a bunch of a thumbs up? Um, with the music, let's see. I don't want it to distract us. It's okay. Is it thumbs up? Alrighty, let's have fun tonight. Uh, so tonight is really coming from a place of, maybe it's also just some of the questions that I get a lot in the DMs um, uh, and when I interact with you guys and, and, and largely because that's times that I find myself in uh, you know, oftentimes, and, 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 and that is that we can get to a place of dryness, right? So, so the reason why you know that there's dryness is because you come from a season or you come from a place where there were streams and rivers and, 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 and water that was supplied for how you quickly identify that you're in a season of dryness is when things no longer move the way they do when 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 things that came naturally to you no longer come naturally where where praying was something that was your quickest resolve all of a sudden you know you'd rather speak to your best friend than speak to jesus about a situation there's a time when we all come to a season of dryness and, and oftentimes when we're in a season of dryness a lot of people equate that time to one them having done something to god therefore god is punishing them uh, two that they're so sinful they're so bad you know, and this is why whatever covering that was over their lives has been removed. Uh, three, that uh, there's some sort of punishment that's taking place that they don't know what the root cause is. Why is this happening to me? Why am I going through this? So tonight we're going to speak about dryness. And I think just look at practical tools or some of the things we can do when we find ourselves in a season of dryness. Why is this important? Because maybe you could be in a lush season right now where the grass is green, baby girl. The sprinklers are sprinkling. You know, the sun is shining and the beds are chipping. But winter is coming, right? Uh, uh, maybe it's daytime for you right now in your life and, and, and the sun is out and it's bright. And, you know, you look at yourself and your selfies and you're like, hashtag sun kissed, you know. But nighttime is coming. And and, 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 and and I love God because he is he has the capacity to be our God in all seasons that we find ourselves in. But oftentimes, as children of God, we interpret dryness or the night season as though God has been moved away from us. So we're going to do a couple of definitions so that we make sure that we are speaking uh, on one accord. I did tell you to get your pens and papers ready, but we're speaking about the season of dryness. I'm going to be looking at Psalm 63. I want to go through all of it. I probably won't finish it, but we'll pull out some nuggets. Um, please go and read the whole of Psalm 63. Psalm 63, somebody just write it in there for somebody who's going to come in and ask where we're reading from. I'm going to take it from verse 1. And it reads as follows. Oh God, you are my God. I earnestly search for you. My soul thirsts for you. My whole body longs for you in this parched and weary land where there is no longer water. Or some translations say where there is no water. I thirst for you. Dryness. I thirst for you. And I want us to stop there at verse 1. And, and let's put a little bit of definition so that we can understand. And, and I'll show you how thirst in the Christian context can almost have a double meaning, right? And, 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 and as we go on, you'll understand uh, 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 the two dynamics. Uh, very simple, basic, uh, I guess, definition of thirst is feeling a need to drink something, Right? Another translation says, having or showing a strong desire for something. Another one says, a need for moisture. 
right? I want you to keep those at the back of your head. If we look at uh, thirst in the Hebrew context, right? So if we take the Hebrew word for thirst is uh, yesema, right? So yesema comes from the root word tzama. And tzama basically, when translated into English from Hebrew, is an overwhelming desire for things either of the natural or things of God. So I want to almost put a baseline for us today to say that it is having or showing or having an overwhelming desire for something. Are we together? But now when we read in the context of Psalm 63 verses 1, Oh God, you are my God. I earnestly search for you. My soul thirsts for you. So, so what do we mean? What does this part of scripture mean when it says my soul thirsts for you it's a needing or a desire or an an overwhelming desire for a renewal right i want you to write that there it's a desire for a renewal it's a need for renewal it's a need for hope it's a need for relief so my soul thirsts for you I'm I'm, 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 I'm either coming to God for a renewing, renew my spirit, renew my mind. I need something afresh, a fresh anointing, a fresh covering, a fresh zeal. Or I'm needing hope that, 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 that raise up a hope in me for whatever I'm dealing with. Or it's a need of a relief that, Father, I'm suffering. I need relief from the suffering. So when he says, you are my God, I earnestly search for you. Now, this part of scripture, just a bit of context, it's David and he finds himself in the wilderness in Judah. So David is removed from his normal surroundings. He is in the wilderness. He literally is in the middle of nowhere. And he says, I earnestly search for you. My soul, meaning even though my surroundings are negative, I'm in the wild, nothing makes sense. It's not you answering my problems. But, but there's something deeper and greater that yearns and, and wants to search from you. And, 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 and it, it's not going to be solved by money. It's not going to be solved by another great relationship. It's not going to be solved by a marriage. It's not going to be solved by a job promotion. It's not going to be solved by that house and that car you trust in God for. It's something that your soul thirsts for. So this brings us that we are made in his image and his likeness. So when we say our soul thirsts after him, our likeness and our image is drawn towards the one we are made out of. I hope you're following me. And I'm giving this very, very clear or broken down description because we're going to move a lot faster as we move on. So my soul thirsts for you. My soul needs a renewal. My soul needs hope. My soul needs relief from suffering. And the truth of the matter is the most times when we find ourselves in dryness, it's because the demands of life can sometimes overwhelm us. The very job that you prayed for overwhelms you. The very business that you're working in or you're working on overwhelms you. The very marriage that God has given you, you know, when Adam went to God and said, you gave me this woman, is the frustration, is the point of frustration. But this is what I want us to have at the back of our minds. See, for our souls to thirst, it does not thirst for what it does not know. moving ahead of myself we'll get there let's define spiritual dryness if you're taking notes the first thing when we feel that prayer and reading of the word becomes difficult is usually the first point of indicators when prayer and reading become a hurdle you guys writing it down when prayer and reading of the word of God become a hurdle, where it becomes strife, where it is something you gotta almost drag yourself into doing. The second one, where faith is an uphill battle. So where you used to trust God, 
all of a sudden you need that boyfriend to pay the rent. Where you used to trust God as a businessman, all of a sudden you need to pay that envelope underneath the door because that's the only way you can secure the contract. You know, where you used to trust God, you know, all of a sudden you're doing things outside of your character because you need a plan B. So, 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 so when faith becomes an uphill battle, we're usually finding ourselves in a spiritual dryness. Where there is another plan outside of God. Third one, when doubt starts to creep in. So the things you knew to be true about God, you start to question. And not question because God has done anything different from who he is. The Bible tells us he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. But because you have moved in your disposition. So other things seem as a solution. So doubt is the absence of God's truth. So when other truths, you know, when people say my truth versus your truth, his truth, everybody has their own truth. Let's vibe with our truth. As Christians, there's only one truth, the way, the truth, and the life. God's truth is the truth. So when the truth is removed, doubt starts to creep in. That's how you know. Then one I want you to also throw in there is unbelief. This is when anxiousness and stress and and depression, where where th- th- there's a genuine unbelief. You're going, ah, you know, I'm going to trust God for you, but I don't think God is going to do it for me. You trust God for everybody else, but not yourself. So unbelief has creeped in. Spiritual dryness. Drought. So 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 David is in the wilderness in Judah, and he says. Oh my God, you are my God, right? I earnestly search for you. My soul thirsts for you. My whole body longs for you. In this weary land, in this space that I'm in, this, this, this space that's decaying, this, this, this economy that's falling apart. I was watching the news earlier on and the lady went on and it's like, it's a failing state. South Africa is a failing state. In this, in this failing state that I'm in, in this land that I'm in, in this, in, this, in this failing marriage I'm finding myself in, in this collapsing career I'm in, in this, in this pool of just disappointment I find myself in, in this weary land, my soul thirsts for you. And I want to almost present a question, and you guys know me here on Jesus, this Jesus act, that I always want us to be careful that are we, are we yearning for him or yearning for the things that he gives us? And David is very clear in Psalm 63 that, that he's looking for this God. He's also not playing oblivious to the fact that everything around him is falling apart. Are you guys still with me? So today I want us to look at some of the things we can do when we find ourselves in a place of dryness. Uh, 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 And I want to put this as a disclaimer. That when you're in a place of dryness and, and, and you are struggling to read the word of God, you are struggling to pray and, and there's a bit of unbelief that's creeping in and the, you're doubting and, and you're starting to have plan B, C, D, X, Y, A, Z. You know, you, you're moving away from the things of God. It's now more your truth versus God's truth. Uh, 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 it's not just, oh, please pray for me that my relationship with God should work out. No, Bazaloni, that's not how it works. I get to I get to the guy that thing. It's just not how it works. The Bible says, "Work on your work on your salvation to show yourself approved. Work on your salvation with fear and trembling." So a lot of us become very lazy in our pursuit in our relationship with God. It's not a laying of hands and then it's going to mysteriously be sorted out. It's not a, oh, I'm just going to come to Thursday's Bible studies. And then during the week, I'm doing my own thing. And all of a sudden, my relationship with God is, no, we can't preach that. We can't preach that. We've got to be deliberate about our pursuit. I love how David starts. He says, you are my God. I earnestly search for you. Not take me out of the wilderness, oh God, and I will serve you. No, 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 no. You are my God. I earnestly search for you. 
How many of us are earnestly searching for God? How many of us can say our souls are thirsty for him? Not his things, him. So we're going to be looking at four things today. And I'm going to try quickly go through them. I can see time is, is not on our side. That we can start to put practically in place. To make our way back. To get ourselves out of this rut. To, 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 to be conscious. To, to be God's workmanship. In getting into a season of lushness. And his goodness. And his streams flowing. Am I making sense? Are you guys with me so far? My notes are all over the place. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Number one. Team, if you guys are in there, just help me out. Ne? The first thing you need to do is find a trusted friend. Woo! I cannot overemphasize this. I cannot. Is it overemphasize? I don't even think that's correct English. Find a trusted friend find a trusted friend what do i mean by this find an accountability partner what do i mean by this develop solid friendships that are god-centered that are honest that are transparent and where you are vulnerable i spoke lots of big english do you understand me Find a trusted friend. And when I say a trusted friend, I'm not talking bro bro code. No, 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 no. I'm not talking that kind of trusted that if you do something, they'll keep your secret to the grave. No, I'm talking about somebody who is conscious and wants you to win at your journey with God. So somebody who will hold you accountable, not to your BFF status, but to the word of God. Somebody who will tell you the truth. Somebody who will say, but that is not according to the word of God. Somebody who will go, hey man, did you pray about that? Somebody who will say, I prayed about it and my spirit doesn't feel right about it. I think before you make that decision, go and seek the face of the Lord. A few weeks ago, we dealt with Daniel too, and 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 we see Daniel and his friends, and they find themselves in a very compromising situation where the king has made a decree to kill all the wise men and sorcerers and everybody. So they are in a position where a decree has been taken out for them to be killed. And 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 when David hears the news, he gathers as much information as he can. Troubleshoots, but quickly runs back to his friends, his trusted friends, his accountability partners and say, hey, we're under fire. Let us all go and pray and ask that God will give us an answer. Do you have friends who pray with you and for you? Do you have friends who know the real you? Do you have friends who, who, who know your, your deepest level of sin that you cover up so beautifully. Do you have people who know the real you? Daniel runs back to his friends. They don't sit there and have a caucus. They don't sit there and have a chit chat. They don't sit there and have ice cream and ball over whatever. No, 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 no. They come as friends and go, we are accountable for each other. Therefore, we will do that which we know what to do and that is to go back to god so daniel comes and he summons them and says this is what's happening this is the information that i have the, friend this is the information that i have that my husband is leaving me friend this is the information that i have that i'm getting retrenched friend this is the information that i have that this relationship i'm in is toxic friend this is the information that i have that my child is going into drugs friend this is the the information that i have that the doctor says i'm diagnosed with this friend this is the information that i have and instead of just us rolling on the floor and, 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 and doing pity parties we're able to go into our secret places and together seek the face of the Lord for an answer when you're in a dry place you need a trusted friend you need somebody who will tell you the truth about you will hold you accountable this is how i wrote it in my notes 
You must at every point in your life have someone who knows the real you. Not the you that you put together. Not the you that you present at work. Not the you that you present at church. Not the you that... And catch the last bit of this. You must at all times have somebody who knows the real you outside. This is going to offend some people. Outside of the people you sin with. Oh, stepping on toes. Mm, 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 mm. You know that he, 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 he's a married man. Accountability. He can't be your accountability partner. Because that's somebody who's helping you harness and keep this sin flourishing. I'm talking there must be somebody within your circle that you can tell the truth and say, hey man, this is the situation that I'm finding myself in. I'm finding it difficult to get out of this place. I'm finding it difficult and they will pray with you. They won't be there and go, yo, Choma, you know it is what it is. No, it's not what it is. It's what the word of God says it is. So, so there must be somebody who knows the real you at any given point outside of the people who help you nurse the sin. The Bible says everything that's in the darkness will be brought unto light. So, 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 so I'm not speaking about the friends who help you get away with it. I'm not speaking about the friends who will go, oh, but friend, you know what? We all have our weaknesses. Hey, I'm speaking about the friend to go, shoo, that's what you did? I really wasn't expecting that from you, but you know, let's pray about it. I know on TV in South Africa, we have friends like these, but like, let's have friends like Daniel who will pray, who will seek the face of the Lord and stand in the gap. Have a trusted friend. I want you to look at James 2, 23. If you can quickly open it or somebody can just write it there. We still under the topic of friend. That's the first thing. And we sing the song. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. You guys know that? Yeah, God is also a trusted friend. I want you to read a James 2 verse 23 and then and, and I'm going to paraphrase it. Somebody can pull it up and put it uh, on the chat. It says, Abraham believed God. Underline believed. Abraham believed God. And it... Okay, I've paraphrased it. I've written it out. Abraham believed God and it was counted to him as righteousness what was counted to him as righteousness his belief in god you cannot be god's friend if you don't believe in him how are we made righteous we are made righteous because christ is made righteous what does the bible tell us that he is the way the truth and the life and only through him do we make it to the father so what has made us righteous the finished work of jesus christ on the cross has made you and i righteous not our right doing it is in us believing that jesus christ died on the cross that we claim righteousness and walk in it abraham believed god Rorusan believed that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. And that he died and he rose and is seated and mediating and advocating for her right now as we speak. She believes it. And this is counted as to her righteousness. And listen to what the rest of the scripture says. And she was then called a friend of God. And Abraham was then called a friend of God. You've got to believe that God is God in order for you to have a true undiluted relationship with him. Have a trusted friend. Believe. He, 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 he's not your friend because he does you favors. Ask people who have real friends. That it's not about what you did for me. It's about who you are to me. It's not about what you bought me. It's about you standing in the gap for me. It's not about uh, what you were able to physically, tangibly give me. It was about what you said in my lowest moment. Do you believe God? 
And the Bible says, and he was called a friend of God. Psalms 25, if you're taking notes, not if, when you're taking notes, write this down. Psalms 25 verses 14 to 17. I want to actually see if I can't pull it up. I've paraphrased it here when you've got time to read through it. I'm just looking at the time. We've got to rush through it a little bit. Uh, And it's basically saying how it starts as the Lord is a friend to those who fear him. Another translation says, the Lord is a friend to those who know him. And know him, not like, oh, I know God, he's so great. No, know him that he's God. Know him that he's sovereign. Know him that he's king. Know him that he's ruler. Know him. The Lord is a friend to those who fear him. Other translation says, know him. And as that scripture continues, it says, and he is the one who saves them in distress. Spiritual dryness. Drought. Let me recap the first one. Find a trusted friend. Daniel 2. Friends who will stand in the gap and be honest and always encourage you to move in the direction of God's will for your life. 2. Believe God. Live in the reality of righteousness and be his friend. All right. Second thing that I want you to write. So the first one is a trusted friend. Second thing that we need to do, remember. You know, I was, I was, I was teasing um, just now before we started and I was singing. The old school Christians will know this one. When I remember what the Lord has done. I will never go back anymore. Okay, all the old school Christians are singing in the background. No, no. Yeah. We used to sing that. When I remember what the Lord has done, I will never go back. When I remember what the Lord has done, I'm incapable of turning around to go back. So number two, remember the goodness of the Lord. Remember that you know God. Remember that you've seen God. Remember that you've been in God's presence. Remember that he has saved you, delivered you, covered you, saved you from yourself and others. Remember the Lord. Let's read verse 2 of Psalm 63. Psalm 63 verse 2 says, I have seen you in your sanctuary and gazed upon your power and your glory. I'll read that again. I have seen you in your sanctuary and gazed upon your power and your glory. I have seen you in your sanctuary. I have seen you. I have gazed upon you, your power and your glory. I know this God. I've seen this God. I've seen this God. Open your Bibles to John 9, 25. It's a story in the Bible of a man who's blind and he encounters Jesus and, uh, and everybody was kind of coming for Jesus at this point because Jesus was doing things that were out of the ordinary, that were, 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 were out of the norm. So he was, he was praying for people on Sabbath. He was, he was doing things that were not what they knew because he was living as the son. He was the Messiah and they were forcing him to do doctrine and they didn't know that the doctrine had become flesh in their midst. So at every given chance, they were trying to find something wrong in what he was doing but long story short jesus you know heals this blind man and i and i you know when you have time read the story i want you to listen to his response the bible tells us in john 9 25 he replied because they ask him hey Evo, did you know that jesus is a sinner jesus is this jesus is that oh jesus is this jesus is that and he replies and he says whether he is a sinner or not I don't know. But all I know is I was blind and now I see. I hope somebody catches us in the spirit. 
When you have seen the goodness of the Lord, nothing and no one can talk you out of what you've seen God do in your life. I have seen the Lord. I have seen his goodness. I have seen him come through for me. Be like the blind man. Look, man, you can come up with whatever situation. You're retrenching me. That's great. All I know that is was was once blind and now I see. Oh, this marriage is falling apart. All I know is I was once blind, but now I see. Oh, 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 this job is not working out. My health is falling apart. All I know is I was once blind, but now I see. I have seen the Lord. David says, I saw you in your sanctuary and I gazed upon your power and your glory. See, see, God's power is one that you cannot deny. When you've encountered him, No situation, great or small, can take you out. And sometimes what happens is that we forget. Not that we don't know. We just forget. Because we've amplified what we're feeling. You're amplifying the problem right now. You're amplifying the lack. You're amplifying the need that you forget. That you were once blind, but now you see. Let's move. Open your Bibles to Psalms 34. Verse 8, one of my favorite scriptures. Psalms 34, verse 8. Woo! Thank you, Holy Spirit. Psalms 34, verse 8. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Taste and see. Woo! Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Taste and see. See, see, a lot of us uh, uh, in this chat, we, we've all seen our mother's stew that she made, that beef stew. And we've all tasted it. And at some point in our lives, we've all attempted to make that stew. You, you, you bought all the ingredients. Regular six ganilala, what like a spice of mother in law. You literally gathered everything that you saw her put together. And when you open the pot, you can see that as much as you put all the ingredients that look like the ingredients she put, it doesn't quite look like your mother's stew. When you taste it, you put all the ingredients like six gun, okay, just six gun, but it doesn't taste like yamewaha. Once you've encountered God, there is nothing else that can present itself as a God and your spirit will not kick against. That's why some people are playing church and and are feeling dry. Though they're in every home cell, every fasting, every revival, every gospel concert, but there's still a dryness in here. You've encountered the God. Now you're entertaining with things that look like the beef stew, but does not taste and look like the beef stew. My example is a bit left. Let me come closer. Me and my brother both have iPhones. Let me tell you one of the biggest fights that will happen in the house is that he has a charger, I have a charger. If Nkafatso Day gives me, they look identical. The charger that's not mine. Because I've seen my charger. I've spent time with my charger. I've seen my charger charge my phone. I know the ability of my charger. If he gives me his charger, before I even plug it in, once you've seen him, once you've encountered him, once you've walked with him, even if you are in a season of dryness, no counterfeit can present itself as a replacement for your God. So some of us are sitting with counterfeits. And your spirit man is kicking against it. The Holy Spirit is going, this is not it. This is not it. This is not it. This is not it. This is not, it. This is not how we live our lives. No, this is not it. This is not our lifestyle. This is not it. This is not how we talk. This is not it. This is not how we pray. This is not it. This is not what we worship. This is not it. This is not what we spend our money on. This is not it. Your spirit man is kicking against it because it knows. Oh. 
Go to Psalms 103. Oh Lord, help us with time. Psalms 103. Psalms 103 verses 2 to 5. We're still under the title or under the subtitle, Remember. Remember the goodness of the Lord. Psalms 103, 2 to 5. 103, 2 to 5. Somebody write it in there. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Ooh, Lord, help me finish this today. Psalm 103, verse 2 to 5. It says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. I'll say it again. Bless the Lord, O my soul. My soul thirsts for you. So who should not forget the goodness of the Lord? The soul. Because, because your eyes will be deceived by what's happening. What needs to not forget is your soul. So bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Let's read the benefits. If you've got it, read it out loud with me. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, forget not all his benefits. He who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction. Woo! Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. Who satisfies your mouth with good things. So that your youth will be renewed like an eagle. Some of y'all didn't hear it. Who forgives your iniquities. Right now you're stuck in that sin that you've created. Yes, you promised God that you're not going to have sex with him again. And you're going to wait until you're married. Now because you've had sex with him, you're staying in that place and you're wallowing. Remember that God has forgiven your iniquities. So that you get up from that mess and turn your face towards God. The one who heals all diseases. Yes, I know you're not feeling well right now. But remember when God healed you. Remember when God healed your mother. Remember when you heard that testimony from that lady in church that God removed the cancer. Remember forgetting not his benefits. Yes, he is the one who redeems you from your life of distractions. Distraction boys. Out of that mess. You were dating that person who was toxic and stealing your life away. You were in that workspace that was just causing destruction in your life. You were doing chakras and what, what, and what, what that was bringing all demonic destruction in your life. And God took you out. Remember. He who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies while you are at the lowest of your sin. He still found you. So what can possibly make you believe that at this point he can't find you where you are? Forgetting not all his benefits. So that your youth, I want to define youth as zeal, energy, power is renewed. What would we say thirsting is? We said it's a renewal. How do we renew by not forgetting the things that God has done for us. Sure. Number three. We're almost done. What do we do when we find ourselves in a die season? <laughs> I titled this one, It Is What It Is. It is what it is. And the reason why I titled it, it is what it is, is because oftentimes we're not honest with ourselves and where we are with our lives and the things that we're facing. You know, you'll choose one thing out of the many things. Yo, I'm so stressed at work, but you're stressed at work. You're also stressed at home. You're also exhausted. You're also overworked. And this is how I've written it. We are overworked and underfed. overworked and underfed meaning what everyday life requires and pulls out of you but because we're not going back to the word of god we're not spending time in prayer we're not we're not spending time seeking the faith we are underfed we are malnutritioned but we are overworked but but this is what i want us to take out of this one and 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 you can in the meantime open first kings 19 first kings 19 verses 1 to 8 first kings 19 we've got to be realistic to say it is what it is i'm tired 
It is what it is. I'm exhausted. It is what it is. I'm frustrated. It is what it is. I've been fighting. It is what it is. Like I'm at that point where you've got to be honest at the point that you are in life. Because Bazaxi, rather the situation of, 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 of pretense. I'm strong in the Lord. I know, don't know, Bazaxi, beloved, I'm strong in the Lord. No, when you're tired, you're tired. When, when you're overworked, you're overworked. When you're spiritually drained, you're spiritually drained. Right, let's look at Kings. I'm going to quickly read it and try to paraphrase it as much as I can because we're out of time. Literally, we've got four minutes. You know I like King Ahab or the story. If, if you follow me, you'll know that I, I bounce on this quite a lot. King Ahab, verse, uh, King, King, first Kings 19, verses 1 to 18. No lies, verses 1 to 8. Now Ahab told Jezebel everything Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with a sword. Ahab told Jezebel everything Elijah had done. And how he had killed all the prophets with a sword. Verse 2. So Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah to say, May the gods deal with me. May it be ever so severely. If by this time tomorrow I do not make your life like the ones of them. So if I don't kill you like they killed them. So he's got a death threat basically over his life. Verse 3, Elijah was afraid. Obviously, I mean, if somebody's going to throw a death threat like that to you, 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 you're scared. Verse 3, Elijah is afraid for his life and he's on a run for his life, right? Uh, he then makes his way to Bathsheba in Judah, uh, where he leaves his servant there. Verse 4, uh, while he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, uh, he came to a broom bush, sat under it and prayed. Listen to this. And prayed that he might die. Listen to what Elijah says. It sounds a lot like us. I have had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. So, Whatever diseases they had, he says, take my life. Verse 5, then he lay down under the bush and fell asleep, going somewhere. And at once an angel touched him and said, get up and eat. He looked around and there by his head was some bread. Imagine that, baked bread on hot coals. Sounds so romantic. And a jar of water. He's in the wilderness. There's no baked bread in the wilderness, let alone a jar of water. He ate it and drank, and then he laid down again to sleep. Verse 7, the angel left him. The angel of the Lord came back the second time and touched him and said, Get up and eat, for the journey is too much for you. So he got up, he ate, and he drank. Strengthened by the food, he traveled for 40 days and 40 nights until he reached where he was going, the mountain of God. Woo! Some of you guys are already getting it. You've got to eat. You've got to drink. And you've got to sleep. I want to almost use this part of the scripture as, as a symbolic, in a symbolic way. That, that you've got to know when to rest. He was ready to take his life. He was ready for God to take his life. He was ready to give up. Some of us are at the point where we're going, yo, I want to take my life. I can't do this anymore. All you need is sleep. All you need is to rest. All you need is just rest. You're sleeping at night, but you're not resting. All you need is rest. So metaphorically, we're going to use this part of scripture today to say we need physical rest. Make time to rest. Make time for your brain to rest. Make time for anxiety not to twirl. Make time to sleep. It's a prayer point for somebody tonight. Give me rest. Give me sleep. 
But if we flip it on the flip side, he was ready to give up. But God sends an angel and says, get up and eat and drink. The second time when the angel comes, he says, get up, drink, for the journey is too much for you. So God is not confused that some of the things that we face are difficult. But he's given us everything pertaining unto life to make sure that we can survive the 40 days and the 40 nights until we get to the mountain of God. So some of us are at a place where we need to rest. But some of us are at a place where we need to get up and eat and drink and sleep again. Get up, eat, drink, sleep again. Get up, eat, drink, because the journey is too far for us. Where God is taking you requires you to eat. Where God is taking you requires you to drink from this word, to eat from this word. The Bible says men shall not live on bread alone, that we need to eat. He was faithful enough. To strengthen him from the food and the rest, peace of mind. The peace that surpasses all understanding. The rest, be anxious for nothing. The rest, I am the Lord. The rest, be still and know. The rest, he neither sleeps or slumbers. He personally watches over you. The rest. Then he was strengthened to go the 40 days and the 40 nights. So if you're feeling like you're overwhelmed and you've, you've hit the ceiling, just rest. Then take a few days out. <laughs> Breathe a little bit. Go talk to God. Tell him your heart. You know, he was honest to sit under the tree and say, take my life. I'm no better than my ancestors. There's nothing more for me to give. And God gives him rest. And then after God gives him rest, he provides for his needs. And gives him rest and provides for his needs. Gives him rest and provides. And that's exactly what God does with you and I. Number four, as we close. And I think it ties in so beautifully with number three. Be honest with God. Tell him the truth. God does not expect you to come to him with, with a manuscript sounding nice and pretending like your life is not your life. Be like Elijah. Sit under the tree and go, Lord, take my life. He was honest. He was running for his life, but he was also honest about where his life was at. In fact, if he really felt like that, he probably would have just stayed for Jezebel to kill him. But, but he still had something in him that kept him moving. And some of us are there. There's something in us that goes, it's going to be okay. It's going to be all right. But that doesn't mean you can't sit underneath the tree and tell God that I've had enough. I love what Elijah says. I have had enough, Lord. I've had enough, Lord. I've had, I've had enough. Because God is faithful enough to give you the rest. He's faithful enough to give you the food you need. The drink you need. To strengthen you anew. Number four. Dealing with dryness. Be honest with God. I close with this. Jeremiah 20. I shared this with the team about two weeks ago and we really went in on it. And I know that we've been taught a doctrine that makes us believe that we've got to come to God with these rehearsed speeches and lines and, and behavior. No, God, God knows the real you. He knows the real you. He doesn't need you to package yourself. Let me know if you're there. Jeremiah 20. Jeremiah 20. I'll pick it from 8. Let's pick it from seven. In fact, if, if, if in your Bible, it's probably tagged as Jeremiah's complaint. Jeremiah is a prophet of God. God is using in a mighty way. He was prophesying. He was doing great things for God. But here he is. Somebody who has seen God move in his life. Somebody who has seen prophecies being fulfilled. Somebody who has seen God make things happen. He's here in verse seven complaining 
A lot like Elijah underneath the tree. Jeremiah says, oh Lord, you must lead me. <laughs> Have you ever felt that where God has sent you to go, it was like a trap? Where you heard God clearly, he said, go here, take this job. Then that job looks like a mess. Do this business. Then that business looks like a mess. Marry this person. Then that marriage looks like it's going upside down. Do this. Then that thing looks like it's going upside down. So Jeremiah in verse 7 is complaining. He goes, oh Lord, you mislead me. And I allowed myself to be misled by you. You are stronger than I am. I love Jeremiah because in whatever state that he finds himself, he's not confused about who God is. But he's honest with God. He says, you are stronger than I am. And I'm overpowered by you. Now I am mocked every day. Everyone laughs at me. You've sent me out to prophesy. I've prophesied. Now I'm this, the, the joke of the town. Verse 8. When I speak the words, burst out. Violence and destruction. So God had given him quite a difficult message to carry out. And obviously when you come with a difficult message, people will shun you because that's not what they want to hear. So these messages are from the Lord have made me a household joke. My business is making me a household joke. My ministry is making me a household joke. My marriage is making me a... My career is making me a household joke. Like ki George or ki joke. Verse 9. But if you say... Verse 9, but if I say I will never mention the Lord or speak his name, his words burn in my heart like a fire. It's like a fire in my bones, meaning I can't control what I feel for this God. I can't control what I've seen this God. Yes, I'm a laughing stock, but I can't control that I was once blind and now I see. I can't remove myself from the reality that I have seen God move in my life. Yes, I see the diagnosis from the doctor, but I can't remove myself from the fact that I've heard this God talk to me. Yeah, 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 I know that I just buried that person, but I can't remove myself from the knowledge of knowing that God loves me. He says, I'm worn out trying to hold on into it. I cannot do it. Verse 10. I heard the rumors about me. Then he goes on. They call me man of terror. They do this. This is the part that I want us to land on. Verse 11. But the Lord stands beside me like a great warrior. Before him, my persecutors will stumble. They cannot defeat me. How do we get out of dryness? Doesn't mean we don't complain. Doesn't mean we're not honest with God. Doesn't mean we don't tell him how we feel. It doesn't mean that we have to do it alone. But what it does require us is to never forget. What it does require for us is to never hold anything in higher regard than we do God. What it does require us is to understand that God's power is limitless. That as much as Jeremiah was complaining about what was happening in front of him, that they're calling me names, they're mocking me, they're saying this and that about me. Then he lands at verse 11 and says, but the Lord stands beside me like a great warrior. Do not forget that he's a great warrior. Do not forget that your persecutors will stumble before him. Do not forget that he loves you unconditionally. Forgetting not all his benefits. Recap one, find a good friend who will turn your eyes back to God at any chance. Make sure that you are God's friend by believing him. And doing life his way. And walking in righteousness. Two. Remember what the Lord has done. Woo! Three. It is what it is. 
There are times when we are tired. There are times when we're exhausted. There are times that we want to give up. There are times when we're sitting under the tree. But this God offers us rest. Rest. Eat. Drink. For the journey ahead you is long. So don't give up. Let's pray. Woo! Let's pray. Let's pray. Hmm. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, tonight we just want to come honestly and open that some of us are finding ourselves in a difficult place that, 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 that we're like Elijah sitting under the tree and the only words we can utter is that we have had enough we've been sick for too long we, we've been looking for work too long we've been struggling for too long we've been hoping for certain things for too long that, that Lord we, we, we're at a point where we don't know Father, I want to pray for the circle of people around us. Holy Spirit, open our eyes to see good friends. Help us cultivate relationships, Lord God, that can hold us accountable to one another. Holy Spirit, help us to locate these good friends, but also help us to become the good friends. That turn and help and stand in the gap of our friends, Lord God, when they're going through the most and turn them back to you, Lord. Not, not our great advice, not the things that we heard in a podcast or, or on an Instagram. No, 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 but what your word says. I pray, Lord God, Holy Spirit, that you will bring remembrance to us tonight. Woo! Remind us that we have seen you that we've seen you move in our families, that we've seen you save us from sin. We've seen you pull us out of a righteous life. We've seen you break us free from addictions. You've, we've seen you, Lord God, heal us and our family members. We've seen you open doors where there was no way. We've seen you hand us over, Lord God, into places of wealth. We've seen you, Lord God, give us an education. We've seen you, Lord God, give us our first, our second, and our third work opportunity. We've seen you, Lord God, help our businesses grow. We've seen you, Lord God, day in and day out, protect our children. We've seen you. Oh, Lord God, I pray that our souls will not forget all your benefits. That you're the one that forgives, the one that redeems, the one that satisfies us with loving kindness and tender mercies. The ones that crown us, the one that encompasses us with his love. May our souls not forget all of your benefits. And let God that it's okay for us to come to a place of realization. That we may be exhausted, we may be overworked and underfed. Feed us. Let it be the jar of water that comes from you. We pray for rest. Your word tells us you've not given us a spirit of fear, but you've given us a spirit of love, of power and a sound mind. We pray for rest. Strengthen us from within, Lord. And Lord God, may we come to a place of honesty with you. Where we don't come with a packaged salvation, but we come as really who we are. And open and willing for you to work within us. Lord God, I cover everybody that's on this live. I speak your grace and your protection over them. I pray, Lord God, that as they go over this word, Holy Spirit, the great teacher, that you will begin to reveal mysteries to them in the mighty name of Jesus. come against the season of dryness that father if we do find ourselves in it 
We pray for the tools and the wisdom and the grace to come to a place of flourishing. To a place of green pastures. But Lord God, we know that we don't do it in our strength. We do it only by your grace. So we come back to you. And we ask you to hold our hand through it, Lord God. Your word says you teach our hands to war. Teach us. Teach us how to survive the seasons we find ourselves in. Teach us how to learn in the seasons we find ourselves in. Teach us how to grow in the seasons we find ourselves in. Teach us to take every lesson that you present. Teach us, Holy Spirit. We thank you and we honor you, great God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Woo! We're late. We gotta get out of here. I love you guys so much. I love you guys so much. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I needed that. Thank you, Lord. Woo! Okay. We're back again tomorrow morning at 5 a.m. Uh, right here. Um, thank you, Holy Spirit. Please, please, please go read over this word. Go read over this word. Let the Holy Spirit tell you more. This is just a little bit that I can find. There's so much more, particularly in the scriptures that we looked at. Go back and watch this again. Take those notes. Take those scriptural references. Go read them. Don't just write it down. Go over it. I'll see you guys tomorrow at 5 o'clock in the morning. We've got prayer. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be great. But more than anything, it's time with God. I can't imagine a better way for us to start our morning. So I'll see you tomorrow morning. Have a blessed evening. Um, and may God just shine his face upon us. May he reveal himself in a beautiful way. May we grow. May we really do this life thing with him and, and not live a mediocre Christian life, but live a life of power fueled by the Holy Spirit. I love you and I honor you. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you tomorrow at 5. Please set those alarms.